Hi friends, today is gonna be my wrap up for the month of November. Today is technically the 28th, so I could finish the book I'm reading right now, which is Book Lovers by Emily Henry, but I don't see it happening because I'm only like 30%. So I'm gonna go ahead and film this and get it moving. If for some reason I do finish reading, it will just end up on December. It's fine. So let's start with stats. In November, I read six books for a total of 2,145 pages. Not as much as I wanted to this month, but still pretty good. We will first, as always, talk about my DNFs, and then we will start with lowest rated, work our way up to the highest rated. Uh, some of these were ARCs, and I do have a recently read ARCs video that came out yesterday, so I will point you in that direction if any of these are ARCs. The first of which is The Wicked Remain by Laura Pohl. That was a DNF. I did DNF that at 10%, and that was one of the ARCs that I read, so if you want to know more about why I DNF'd that, you can find that there. Along with uh, Pretty Dead Queens by Alexa Dunn, I did DNF at about 8%. And if you want to know more of my thoughts on that, you can find that in yesterday's video as well. I also DNF'd The Merciless Ones by Nomina Forna, um, which is the sequel to The Gilded Ones, which I absolutely loved. I DNF'd this at 25%. I definitely felt like it was written by a different author or someone with like a different, completely different point of view in mind. Um, it didn't read, it, it wasn't what I wanted, basically. Um, I really loved the first book and the second book just felt, it just wasn't what I expected, I guess. It wasn't what I wanted to get from the second book in the series. I think I'm definitely not the only one from that standpoint because there are a lot of people who like there's a lot of five stars for this book but there's also a lot of two stars for this book and interestingly it's one of the very few books that I have ever seen on Goodreads that has a higher rating for the first book than the second book because typically a first book in a series will have a lower rating than everything else because people you know will have read the first book and if they didn't like it they're not going to continue reading the second third fourth book. most people will not continue reading on in the series so typically your second third fourth however many books will have a higher rating than your first book and this one does not uh it has a higher first book rating than a second book rating which just goes to show you that i'm not the only one who read the first book and loved it and read the second book and was like what is this um, I feel awful about it, but that's how I feel. So, uh, so books I actually finished starting lowest to highest. Uh, the first would be Accomplished by Amanda Quain. This is a Pride and Prejudice modern day Georgiana Darcy's story. I, again, talked about that yesterday in yesterday's ARC wrap up video. So if you want to know more about that, you can go check that out there. Uh, then we had The Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling at 3.75 out of 5 stars. This book is about a teenager who has gained this power where anytime she touches someone she sees how they die. And it's not just a visual thing, it's also a physical, emotional type thing. Like she can feel how they die. It's, it's a big thing. Uh, she is met by a vampire who is like trying to convert this death oracle in onto the side of good or possibly evil we'll never know uh, except you will if you read the book uh, but it was more of a YA romance with a little bit of paranormal activity kind of thrown in and centuries old grudges for sure uh, I did enjoy the book uh, but it wasn't exactly what I was expecting because I've read from Isabel before and the magic was more forefront than the romance and I think this book was definitely more romance than magic uh, not that that's bad, it's just not exactly what I was expecting having read her works before. We then have The Kiss Curse by Erin Sterling. This is the second book in the X-Hex trilogy. Um, is it actually called the X-Hex trilogy or is it called something else? We'll never know. Um, but I gave this a four out of five stars. I love these characters. So this book follows Gwen, who is the cousin of the character from the first book. And it's like Gwen and she's running the magic shop and um, the love interest from the first book, his brother moves to town and he's very stodgy and like very um, buttoned up. And we learn things about Wells as the book goes on. Um, <laughs> 
This is one of my favorite romances. It was very cute. I love these characters. It was much more romance than witchy, uh, but I knew that going into this, and that is exactly what I expect from these books. I expect the romance. I expect the banter. I expect there to be like some magical hijinks, but I expect like the romantic banter and the grumpy sunshine and all of the things. It made me very happy. Um, it did exactly what I needed it to do. I, I would like there to be some more magic parts of it. Um, the one thing that really like burned my biscuits is a spoiler so I can't really talk about it but there was like one scene between Gwen and Wells where they kind of discussed something that had happened in the past um, and it was like a I know what you did last summer kind of moment where it was like I did this thing but you don't know that it was me and like the person who did it or was it never confessed up to it and I feel like that's a like a pivotal moment of this book that didn't happen on page and it really hurt me that it didn't happen on page so you know I need it to be there and it's not there you know um I'm going to I'm gonna skip around here um I will say that I also read The Luminaries by Susan Dennard which I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars but that was also an arc so if you want to know more about my thoughts on that one you can also read that in or you can watch that in yesterday's video and then we're gonna go back down a notch so we actually end up end on talking about a book um and that is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik and I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars I was not expecting to love this as much as I did so I've heard a lot of things about it over the years and I it didn't sound like it was a book that I would enjoy but I read it during a I read the first chapter during a try chapter that I was doing and was like absolutely yes so this is not my typical kind of story it's slower it's more character driven it's more atmospheric it has a plot but it's not like the main focus of the thing like it's these things that are like all being woven together very slowly throughout the book and you're seeing this atmosphere and you're having these worlds built and it's just very slow but so good I loved watching the world unfold and en enjoying getting to learn about all of the different characters and their stories, their backstories, how they were connected and, and how their futures were going. And there was a lot of things in here that I really, really enjoyed. The one thing that I will say about this book that I really didn't like, and it's the same in the audiobook as it is in this physical copy, is that it changed point of views a lot without telling you it was actually changing point of view. Like there were a lot of moments where it was jumping to the next thing, but you didn't know that it was jumping to the next thing. And so it was just like a, like, and you were getting new points of view um, that were just like popping in out of nowhere. And you're like, and then you're just in a whole different thing. And it was hard to keep up with everything. And I think that really did a detriment to this book's writing. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed this. I'll definitely be reading more by Naomi Novik in the future. Oh, I lied. Um, the last book that I have to talk to you about is Glass Heart by Kate Alice Marshall. And I gave that a 4.75 out of 5 stars. So I guess I didn't need to switch them around because this is the highest rated book of the month. Um, it is the final book in the 13th trilogy. I started reading in October. I loved this series so very much. Um, it was definitely spooky and all the mid-grade vibes. It had all of the things that I loved from the first two books plus like an additional added on to it. Uh, we get to learn the past about the people who look away and we also get to learn the future of our golden trio and like their families and how things are happening. It was a really fun read. Um, the series overall was really good. If you miss me talking about the series last month, um, essentially it is a group of three teenagers who are all turning 13 on Halloween and their town has been cursed um, by children being born on Halloween. When they turn 13 they kind of disappear and so it's like them having to fight the big bads and overcoming this town curse. Um, it's a really great trilogy. Um, Kate Alice Marshall is like solidifying herself as one of my favorite authors even though I've only read five of her books. Um, absolutely in love. So that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification button down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!